I'm Nan Geschke, your host at the Los Altos History Show. Tonight we'll be discussing the life and art of Los Altos art artist Annie Knapp Fitz. Annie died about two and a half years ago, uh, and she, she left a very special legacy to Los Altos. And tonight, uh, to discuss her special talents with us, we have two special guests, Virginia Carlson and Mary Edwardson. Welcome, Mary and Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're really pleased that you could join us. Um, Virginia and Mary are uh, retired elementary school teachers. Uh, they also they work in the classroom, but they also uh, uh, volunteer their their time at History House. Um, Mary is on the education committee with me, actually, and Virginia is the coordinator for the the docent program. But for the past six years, uh, they have uh, worked together uh, with the third graders here in Los Altos and on their third grade tour. And we'll talk a little bit more about that third grade tour in a little while. But I wanted to ask both you and Virginia, Mary and Virginia, uh, how you first met Annie. I, I know um, my first experience with her, and I'd like to find out what yours was, Mary. Well, it was in 1988 that um, I was researching the history, local history for the school district, and um, I went to the library and I uh, found this wonderful book, Riding Back, Sketches by Annie Knapp Fitz of uh, early Los Altos, Palo Alto, Mountain View. And uh, the Fitzes had published it, and so I was able to track them through the telephone directory and gave them a call. Annie invited me over, and that was the beginning of a wonderful friendship and liaison. So you found her in the library. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Locally, too. Oh, yes. That's yes, a wonderful definitely. story. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Virginia? Well, I met Annie through Mary. <laughs> right. And when I came on board the program after I retired from teaching, I'd been teaching third grade, and Mary asked me if I would like to join the program, and I thought it was a great idea. And so my first assignment was to work with Annie. And Mary had been working with her before, and she was very comfortable with Mary, and she knew Mary very well. And at the beginning, she was a little bit anxious about what it would be like to work with me. And I was anxious about whether I could, you know, work with the paintings and Annie. But it turned out to be a wonderful experience for both of us. And uh, we became good friends and worked together for two years. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. I, I met Annie uh, actually through uh, my time, my work at, on the education committee, mm -hmm. and knowing that uh, we wanted to to get her on tape, mm -hmm. and we actually do have uh, some tape that we um, were able to get an interview of her uh, when we were uh, putting together the documentary *Los Altos: A Sense of Place*. And uh, Annie was such a special person with mm -hmm. such a yeah. wonderful mm -hmm. personality. And she had a gift for words and a way to tell stories. And I thought maybe to give our viewers a little, uh, a little preview of, of, of what Annie was like, we could sort of show that clip to kind of give you a feeling for, for Annie Knapp Fitz. So we can roll that clip now. We didn't buy clothes. Usually people from San Francisco would give us our Cast off. I was a third girl, so you can imagine. Anyway, they came up with some boots that came way up high. I think they were for, meant for back east, and uh, they didn't fit Teresa, didn't fit Katie, and then they looked over at me. Ha! Ah, sure enough, I was the one, and they fit me. And my mother said I had to wear them to school. Well, I had a dress, a linen dress that crinkled. It was orange, and it had kind of a black trimming on it, and it wrinkled, and I didn't like it. So I had a coat that was given to us, and it had a, a high fur, my little face, with a high fur collar, and it has, I like the colors. They were kind of uh, sort of in between fuzzy, like these colors, in a soft, uh, they were kind of soft, not as bright as this. So with the bicycle, I went up the two miles, but I was happy, I thought, I'm, Myra Miller is going to give me a straw hat. And why is she giving it to me? Because I used to um, take ink and do the girl's knees with the Nellie Brinkley or somebody, or a fancy thing, and then they would move their knee and it would make a face. Well, she wanted to be first in line. 
So okay, I promised her if she would give me that hat, I would let her be first. So, oh yeah, and then I put, she did bring the hat and put it down, and then John Conley, he was a big tease, and he put an inch, when I wasn't looking, he put an inchworm on my hat. <laughs> an inchworm, and then the teacher walked in. And wouldn't you know, I would be the culprit. She looked at me, and she thought she could spot right away who was the middle of all this confusion. Well, there I was, all excited about that worm. And of course, John Connolly acted like nothing happened. That was really classic Annie, wasn't it, uh, Mary in Virginia? Absolutely Definitely. classic, Definitely. yes. <laughs> it really showed her personality. But yeah. I guess she had another side, too. Well, she did. She was a very playful person. She had a wonderful sense of humor and a, and a true sense of wonder about the world. But on the other hand, she was a very serious artist. And every historical painting that she did she wrote on the back of it exactly what the painting was, mm -hmm. uh, if the scene and what year, if she took it from a photograph, what year the, the actual event happened, and who was in it, and the number of acres that a particular farm or ranch might represent. So she, she knew at the time that she really wanted to save all this. And, she was very, very thorough and did lots of research as so well. So she did a lot of research. Yes, she I've did. heard that too, mm -hmm. that she's, you know, she went to libraries and, and talked did. to people and collected photographs. That's right. Yeah. What's so special about uh, Annie's art to you, Mary? Well, I guess what's special to me is the reaction from the children and the people when they see it. Um, Annie considered herself a primitive uh, painter. Uh, she had, was self-taught, and um, she sketched, drew, painted, sculpted all her life. And uh, she did take one class and came home so disgusted because they told her she was doing everything wrong. Um, I'm not an artist myself, and I'm not uh, an art critic, but uh, uh, I just felt that she did capture the essence of the people and the happenings and the places that she was portraying. And, um, and certainly her stories that she tells that go along with it um, entertain the children, and I think they got a very good appreciation. And adults, too, who, who came to see her and oh, listened to her. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so. she, she really was able to communicate with, uh, right. with her colors and her, her innocence, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's especially important today because the children, people are so visually oriented with television and so forth. And for, them, for the future generations to see these paintings now, it'll be, I think, much more meaningful than just to be hearing about it oh, or old a, photographs. That's really so mm -hmm. true, mm -hmm. so true. Uh, now, in terms of, um, of how she got started, I know she, she painted uh, you know, throughout her life, mm -hmm. but she really didn't start these paintings of Los Altos until she was a little older. Do you know the story about that? Yes, Virginia? I do. She started when she was 58. And of course, she had grown up in Los Altos and seen such great changes, especially after the war. Things began to change. Los Altos began to grow. And so she decided, uh, because a neighbor asked her, what did it used to look like, Annie? And Annie was always lamenting the fact that it was changing all the time. So she decided she would uh, paint a picture to show and, how and it And we, we actually like. have yeah. that picture uh, today. Yes, have, yes. That's actually the first painting that uh, uh, we're going to be showing the, um, the viewers tonight. So uh, maybe you could just sort of discuss what that painting is like. Right, well, that painting uh, is what Annie could see from her kitchen window. She would, as a child, she would stand up on a box or a stool and look out the kitchen window, and that's exactly what she could see. And that's her farm. Uh, her family lived on an eight and a half acre farm. And she painted that picture, and um, when she finished it, she looked at it and she thought, well, I like that, but that doesn't say everything I want to say about Los Altos. And so. That was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. <laughs> and so she painted another one, and then she had the same reaction to that, and another one, and another one, and that's really what got her started. Trying to say all the things that she wanted to say and to paint about the community that she loved and grew up in. Right. Well, I know that uh, 
that we have lots of paintings that we want to share with our viewers tonight. But um, I know that we have a clip of Annie in the classroom uh, during the third grade tour. And I forgot to ask you, I said I would, uh, <laughs> what, what was, what's involved in that third grade tour? Oh, well, the third grade tour is um, part of the history program, third graders in our district, uh, because it's a state mandate, study the, their community, the history of their community. And so this is a program that is sponsored by the school district and uh, the, the historical commission. And it is open to all third graders uh, in Los Altos, the public schools, the parochial schools, and the private schools. And we do it every spring. It's a four-week program. And the children come in the mornings to, uh, and it's basically a field trip. And there are three activities. One activity is to tour History House Museum. The other activity is to take a downtown walkabout, and during that they see all the, uh, the docent tells them all the, what the old buildings, the buildings used to look like, and sure. acquaints them with the, uh, the changes in the downtown community. And then there's um, a session with Annie's paintings. And um, we try to tell Annie's story. She used to tell them herself. She would sit with the children, at her feet and the paintings all around her in the room. And uh, we would go to, from one painting to another and she would, and we would introduce the paintings to the children and then Annie would tell her stories. So Mary and I have learned the stories that go with the paintings and oh, we do our best. That's wonderful. Well, actually, and retelling Annie's stories. Great. Well, we, actually, we have uh, a, a, a clip of Annie in the classroom uh, of sharing with the children, uh, 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 and Mary actually is introducing the painting. So uh, let's roll that clip now. We're, uh, down at the end of um, San Antonio Road by El Camino was the Lauk's Horse Ranch. And the day that they had this picnic, one of the sons, the Lauk's sons, heard about this. He heard that, hey, there's going to be three hot dogs and free soda given away. And so he hipped on his bicycle and came up and had some hot dogs and soda. And this is the Lauk's Ranch down near where Village Corner is. I believe it's called Village Corner in that area. Tell us about the Lauk's Ranch, though, Annie. There was 35 acres of um, wild horses that they would have shipped from Oregon by train. And when they got to South Palo Alto, South Palo Alto, they stopped and let all the horses out. And of course, in those days, El Camino was just a dirt road. So for about three miles, they had these horses all gathered and going down to the Laos farm to be trained for the uh, surrey or the plow or for riding or for whatever they might need the horses. And some horses were untrainable. They all had personalities, just like you folks. None of you are the same. The horses are the same. They all have a different personality. I love that uh, story that Annie tells about the wild horses coming down El Camino. I just, I can't, I can't imagine that now. Can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> but Annie was full of stories, and I know we're going to start to share them now. Um, Mary, I know that one of Annie's favorite pictures was the uh, the one of the Los Altos Grammar School, and uh, I know that we're we have that on our easel now, and. Uh, what were some of her, her stories? Well, the one I liked best um, that Annie told was her first day of uh, school at, uh, or I should say going to school at the Los Altos Grammar School. It was on San Antonio, um, the corner of Hillview and uh, San Antonio Road. And um, the Knapp family moved down from San, uh, San Francisco. Uh, they'd been um, on the ranch about two weeks getting settled. and. Um, the Papa and Mama announced on Sunday afternoon that uh, the three girls, Teresa and Katie and Annie, were to go to school the next day. They were to start school. And so the next morning, of course, they up and dressed and packed a lunch and so forth. And Papa um, harnessed up Daisy and um, <laughs> out to the wagon. And the three girls hopped on the back of the wagon with their legs swinging in the midair and rode um, down uh, Santa Rita Avenue, as it was, where they lived then. I mean, it was, it was now Los Altos, but, but it was Santa Rita then, um, either to El Camino or up to Portola and then up San Antonio Road. And uh, he did a turnaround, 
said, okay, everybody out. They hopped off the back of the wagon, grabbed their lunches, and Papa just drove off. He took off. Mm. And here was Annie and Katie and Teresa, and Teresa being the oldest of the three, shepherded them up to the front door, and they knocked on the door. They tried to open it. Uh, they peeked in the windows. No one was around. They couldn't figure out what in the world was wrong. And so they walked around to the back, and lo and behold, they couldn't believe their eyes. Here was this beautiful playground, swings and slides and everything. Up in San Francisco, they'd only had just a field of dirt. And um, Annie said, oh, they played and played until they became so hungry, they sat down and, and um, ate their lunches and finally trundled off home in the middle of the day. Papa and Mama weren't so sure they believed what the girls told them. So the next morning, Papa took them back again to school. But this time, he stopped and talked to Miss Shannon, the lady with the red hair in the painting, principal and teacher of the school. And she said, oh, Mr. Knapp, I'm sorry, she said. We didn't know we were going to have new children. We were all out, children and teachers, to a funeral. One of our teachers died, and we all attended the funeral. Oh, so, so that was quite a memorable <laughs> beginning for Annie. <laughs> first day of school to right. start with a funeral. Um, well, while we're putting our second painting up, um, Virginia, I know that Annie loved to talk about this this painting that we're bringing up now uh, uh, of the playground. Uh, right. That was one of her favorites also, I think. It and was. Also one that was a favorite with the children. It Wasn't was. that right? Yes, the children loved that painting. Why did they Why did they love it so much? Well, because they, they uh, can relate to playgrounds. They love recess. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, and it was fun for them. We looked at that painting to find uh, similarities and differences to their playgrounds today. And they could find lots of similarities. They could find boys playing ball in the background and girls playing jack and kids playing jump rope. And, but there were a couple of things that they, they really didn't understand. There's a very steep slide, for one. And then there, were, uh, there was a teeter-totter, which looked very, very steep. You know, if you can, you yes. can see, it goes way, way up. And they always wondered what that was. And then they wondered what that little red thing flying in the air was. Yes. Well, it turned out that uh, if they looked really closely, they would usually guess that it was a child. And Annie painted her feelings into this a great deal because to her, as a little child, her memories were seeing this enormous swing set and this very, very long slide and then the experience of swinging and you know when you're pumping and pumping and pumping and all of a sudden the the swing goes bump you know and you yes. think you might go over to the top and i think that scary feeling is what she wanted to put into that of the child just feeling like uh, she's Wee. going over the top the wee <laughs> feeling <laughs> yes <laughs> and the teeter-totter is something that we don't have anymore in our playgrounds because they're too dangerous of course they're very dangerous mm -hmm. and i guess the children were hurt and they finally took uh, very severely hurt on that particular teeter-totter and they had to remove it but that's uh those are the things the children like about the playground and even the dog who's there probably nibbling on somebody's lunch. <laughs> it's not an unusual experience right. for children today because they have uh, dogs that occasionally come on campuses. Little, little mascots. Or seagulls or something that peck at lunches. <laughs> seem to find their way so they, into playgrounds. I know yes, that's true. Yes, they do. Well, I, 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 I'm taken with this painting too because of the, 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 the volume of the, of the play set. And I think that's what a place that looks like to a child. And when you go yes. back, I remember going back to the, my playground, as my childhood playground, and looking at the play equipment and thinking, it, it must have shrunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know, another thing, in the schools in Annie's day, uh, this, that school had a playground that had to provide uh, equipment for children from kindergarten through eighth grade. And so, uh, actually, the swing set was very large, and that happened to be a painting that she did from a photograph. So, and even in the photograph, I've seen the photograph, and it looks very large in the photograph. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. as we're putting our, our third painting up on the easel, I know that uh, Annie's uh, uh, early days, she talks about, um, I remember a, a, a story that she talked, uh, told about um, 
Nellie Rigaudi, the, the cow. Nelly, the cow, yes. Nellie yes. Rigaudi. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember that as being a very cute story of Annie's. But um, this, this next painting of, of, of Annie's home, Mary, I think is interesting. Um, because it's it's something that's kind of vanishing from La, the Los Altos uh, yes. landscape now, isn't it? Yeah, it, very definitely. You still see some tank houses, and usually that was uh, one of the first structures, of course, that was built on the small ranches because they needed to um, have the water tank or some source of water for the irrigation. And many of the people could not afford more than just that one building, and so that that provided a house for the family also. They lived below these gallons and gallons of water. Mm. And uh, one of the stories that Annie tells about mm. uh, living in her tank house was, uh, well, recently we've had these rainstorms and wind and trees down and so forth. We haven't had the thunder and lightning that Annie says that they had one night. It was terrible, she said. They were all awake most of the night, Mama and Papa and the three girls and Finally, the next day, uh, Papa was so relieved that not too much damage had happened to the ranch. And, but he was determined. He said he was going to take down the water tank from the top of the, um, uh, the tank house because uh, he was afraid that the lightning would strike that water, um, body of water, and they'd lose the whole structure. Oh, sure. And maybe themselves. And so uh, he dismantled it and then. Uh, replaced it, uh, built it on some structure at the far end of the ranch. Yeah. But uh, uh, she says, she tells other stories about the tank house. She, she said she really didn't like living in a tank house. She hoped someday she could live in a real house. A real she house. And she was like, there until and she, she married, did. didn't she? Yes, mm -hmm. and then when she and Joe married, they bought the real house right. that she always mm -hmm. wanted. And well, speaking of ranches, as we're putting up our next picture, um, Los Altos had a very different economy than it does today, oh, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, part of that economy was an agricultural one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, many of, of Annie's pictures have uh, have a agricultural flavor to them, and I know this one that we have up on the easel now does. Uh, and uh, would you want to talk about yes, that? Yes, it does. And I think this the reason Annie wanted to paint this. Uh, is because she wanted the children to know how Los Altos used to look. I mean, it was used to be a farming and agricultural community. And today it's so totally different from that that when we show children this picture, they, it's so hard for them to believe that uh, Los Altos was covered with beautiful blossoming fruit trees every spring and, and that people made their livings. Um, working on working their orchards. So this happened to be a particular 11 or this 20 acre orchard which was uh, close to Annie's farm and um, in it uh, it shows the people working and cutting the apricots. Now when they harvested the apricots it was always in the summer around 4th of July and you could see that it's um, the apricots are all being picked by men because they had to get up on the tall fruit ladders and that wasn't something the children could help with. And the men would carry the buckets of apricots over and uh, you can see two children sitting there on boxes watching the whole operation and one of those, the girl is Annie. She painted herself there. Mm -hmm. And um, she's watching but they're not really able to participate at that age. It's all just kind of interesting. And then, of course, the uh, the apricots go in boxes, and then they're put on they're cut sure. and put on trays and so on. So uh, this was something that you had to be quite a bit older to help with. But it was a fascinating thing. And uh, apricot orchards and prune orchards were uh, the way of life. Were there. the way of life in Los Altos? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and many of the young people earned their summer. Uh, uh, extra monies by cutting uh, cuts oh, sure. for their neighbors, and then sure. they were the workforce. When they had to be teenagers, mm -hmm. they could do I that. I even enlisted my children sure. <laughs> in the 70s to, <laughs> to cut apricots. Yes. So we had two apricot trees. Uh, well, as we're putting our last picture up on the easel, I know that the town, Mary, looked very different than it does now. Although uh, we're lucky in Los Altos that we do have as many old buildings as we do on Main Street, but. Um, 
the, this picture of Main Street that we're bringing up now on, on our, our camera uh, looked a little different than it does yeah. today, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> well, I think it's hard for people to envision that uh, Los Altos was really a western railroad town. And it when did you look think like of that, why you think of the prairie and so forth and so <laughs> on. But we had few, just a few buildings for a number of years. We had the Shout Building, which is on the corner of First and um, uh, excuse me, Second and Main. It's a two-story building where the Eureka Bank is now, and um, that was actually the second building built. And then the Eschenbrucker uh, Hardware was the first uh, building that was built downtown. Uh, the vacant lot in between it, and on the painting you'll see a lot of vacant areas down the street. Um, you'll see that there are curves and there are sidewalks. Um, they were pretty, pretty progressive in <laughs> doing all that <laughs> uh, at that time. But um, uh, it was very, very slow growing. Few, um, you know, the bank and uh, uh, the pharmacy and um, uh, the library, they had one, the library in one bit, and of course the land office that was selling the lots. But um, it was sort of a sleepy, in fact it had a, a nickname of Gopher Town because there were so many gophers and oh, obviously they, they were housed in those vacant lots. Uh, so so uh, uh, Los Altos was a slow growing uh, It was community. until, you know, until, until the, the 40s war. and mm -hmm. wartime and, and, and then after war. <laughs> well, I know um, when our time left, uh, we have uh, a very um, uh, unusual bust on our coffee table tonight. And uh, Annie, I know, was not only a painter, but she also was a sculptor. Mm -hmm. And I know this one is was one of her particular favorites. Uh, Yes, Virginia was that is one that happens to be Sarah Winchester, mm -hmm. and um, it was one of Annie's favorites, and fa she called them her terracotta bus. She taught herself. She did take some lessons in sculpture, but uh, uh, she worked in. She fired them, but she didn't do any glazing, and she has some amazing sculptures oh, that's of people that were uh, very instrumental in the history of Los Altos and the forming of the city, and. Um, Sarah I'm, Winchester. Um, we're running out of time. This okay. is usually the way it happens, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to have cut you off, Virginia, but um, um, we are so happy that we were able to share as much as we could tonight with our viewers. And I uh, just wanted to mention that um, there is this book, Writing Back, uh, Historical Sketches by Annie Knapp Fitz, available at History House. And uh, we owe Annie Fitz and Annie Knapp Fitz a lot. Uh, she, she left us a rich legacy here in Los Altos. She donated or bequeathed all of her paintings and all of her sculptures, as well as the copyright to this book of her hist historical sketches to History House. And we're, we're very, um, very honored to have known Annie and to have uh, uh, been enriched by her life. And we want to remember her uh, with, uh, with, with uh, all of us sort of praising her in terms of her art. So uh, we have one last audio clip that we wanted to roll over our credits tonight. And it uh, kind of sums up uh, not only uh, Annie's art, but I think also her, her life. So uh, thanks for joining us for the Los Altos History Show. And thank you, Mary and Virginia, very much for thank joining us tonight. It's a pleasure. And uh, see you next time. Let's roll that tape. Well, you have to have a big drive for whatever you like. That is the main thing. You have to have the drive and have the feeling for it. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. But I did have the feeling for what I wanted to do. And I'm still trying. Thank you.